So while people are filing in, just a quick note about me. Uh, so I'm Infosec Sherpa on Twitter, in case you didn't know. But uh, so I'm Tracy Z. Mayleaf. I'm from the Philadelphia area. Uh, I actually started my first Infosec job two and a half weeks ago. I am a cyber analyst in a SOC for a large multinational company. Uh, I was a librarian who, for 15 years, I have a master's degree of library and information science. And what I was doing, when I was doing OSINT, I didn't know it was called OSINT. I just thought it was called doing my job. <laughs> so uh, when I decided to have this epiphany and this career change into InfoSec, um, I you know, all of a sudden realized that I had all these research skills that I could contribute to this community. So I am learning the tech and I am presenting and sharing my research skills. Uh, so that's kind of why you should listen to me, basically, is uh, you know, I, I spent most of my time as a librarian at a law firm, so I know how to find things and for, you know, for court and stuff like that. Um, so I love Twitter. Um, I think Twitter is a great research tool. I know that there are a lot of downsides, negative to Twitter. I know there's a lot of, you know, there, there's bad sides to Twitter. But today's going to be all the happy, shiny uh, parts about Twitter. But um, again, if you, if in case you didn't read the description of my talk, it's not about tweeting out. I can't help you get verified. I can't help you get more followers. I'm going to help you pull information from Twitter because I have some facts here that'll help prove my point about why Twitter is a great uh, OSINT tool. Uh, as of June. 30th, 2016, they had 328 million monthly active users. 82% of those were on mobile. 79% of those accounts are outside the US. And over 30 languages supported. So to break it down another way, uh, there was, uh, it's estimated that there's 6,000 tweets per second, 350,000 tweets per minute, 500 million tweets per day, and 200 billion tweets per year. So that is a lot of user-generated raw data that is low-hanging fruit that is easy for the picking. So uh, what I want to help you do is uh, find that better. So um, consider this part, you know, consider this, this talk and also this part, the whole like RTFM of Twitter. Like I think like if you have a car, you should kind of read the manual and know how it works. I think you should know how Twitter works before you go using it. So I have a couple other highlights and things I want to go over. Uh, March 21st, 2006, the current CEO and one of the original founders, Jack Dorsey, tweeted his first tweet. January 2010 was the first tweet from outer space. And the most important milestone, to be quite frank, was July 16th of this year, which marked the 10th anniversary of me being on Twitter. <laughs> so. Uh, and that was as Library Sherpa, because I started the whole Sherpa thing a long time ago. I was Library Sherpa, now I'm InfoSec Sherpa. Uh, so the last thing I want to mention before I dive in is um, keep in mind, Twitter was not designed as a search engine. It's not, and it is not a search engine. <laughs> Therefore, um, it cannot, it, it's not easy sometimes finding things. It can be, what's the technical word? Wonky. <laughs> it can be very wonky to find things. So keep that in mind. There, true story, there are times I've done similar talks like this. The next day, somebody will be like, I tried one of your sample searches and it doesn't work today. That's Twitter. <laughs> that could happen. So I'm going to have these slides posted. I'm going to have sample searches. Keep in mind, if something doesn't work, it might work the next day. Things change all the time, so bear that in mind. And also, um, if you're doing some research and you, and you find stuff that, you, that it's good information, screen cap it, print it, save it, something, because you might not be able to find it, again, the same exact way. So again, since I was working with like lawsuits and stuff like that, I had to save everything I found, because there was no guarantee that I'd be able to find find it again necessarily. So your first fun fact, the bird has a name. His name's Larry. He's Larry Bird. And this is the proof. This stone is one of the, the founders, and he's from the Boston area. So someone asked him, hey, is the bird really named Larry? Yes, he is. So fun fact. Um, what I don't think that people know a lot about is that in order to get information about Twitter, you can use their own resources. They have blogs and Twitter accounts. And I highlighted these, engineering and developer. If you're someone who wants to know what's going on with uh, the API or just different search techniques and changes, you know, a couple of years ago, remember, you, um, you used to have to use the at, a period before the at symbol if you wanted everyone to see the tweets. Well, they got rid of that. Well, th those announcements are made through these internal accounts. Like, that's how the media finds them. So if you're really interested in knowing what the changes are, follow the blogs or follow things straight from the bird's mouth. Follow the Twitter accounts. Uh, so real quick, I just want to go over a uh, landscape of social media because um, this is something that I did a lot of research on. And, Companies have paid me lots of money to tweet for them or to do research for them. 
So um, just know that for all these, you know, for all these social media platforms that you think you know, there's probably seven more that you don't. <laughs> so if you are not finding the information that you need on Twitter, it's possible that you might need to find another platform. So I thought this was a pretty cool graphic of some of the ones there. And also, so, okay, so here, first candy one. Who tells, who, where's this country is this from? What country? There we go. I'm just going to throw this randomly, so, woo, candy. <laughs> just woo, heads up. There we go. Here we go. <laughs> okay, so again, if you are not finding the information that you need, um, you know, there are a lot of countries that have their own native-grown social media. China's one, the link there, the Shiner on security, he has a blog post about how to do research uh, on social media with the, uh, with the censorship. So that's a good blog post. That's all hyperlinked, so when you get my slides, you can click on that. Another thing to keep in mind, demographics. Social media platforms have their own um, you know, age ranges that they cater to. So you see Twitter there in the middle. I know this is from 2014, but it's still pretty much accurate. Uh, Snapchat obviously skews a lot younger. So if you're doing any sort of like marketing research or something, and, uh, you know, and Twitter doesn't fall into that demographic, then try another platform. I like to joke that I hate the slide, but I use it anyway, and I'll explain why. I don't know how this got started, but somebody came up with the idea that the best time to post to Twitter was between 1 and 3 in the afternoon. Um, I don't know where they got that from. I really tried hard to find the statistics. So this is why I show it. And this is more of like maybe a phishing sort of way reason that I, I keep this in here. Um, because this is so prevalent, uh, like everywhere you go, everyone's like, oh, post between 1 and 3 in the afternoon. I feel like that's also a good time to go searching for stuff because so many people are posting <laughs> during that time. And so that's, that's the only reason why I keep this up there is um, when I, I did, gave this talk one time specifically for like, you know, fishing exercises, I was like, check it out between one and three. There must be, pe might be people posting things. So something to keep in mind. These will be all posted too if you don't get, if I forward stuff. So, um, and I already gave my little not a search engine talk. The last thing I want to mention is I inc purposely included those different uh, devices. Okay, I don't know why, but this is the way Twitter is. You, will, you can get different search results if you are on a desktop versus a mobile versus a tablet versus whatever. Also, if you are logged into your browser, you will get different, it'll skew your search results as if you're not logged in. So again, the best way, the clean slate to do it is log out of anything, do your search. If you're not finding something, maybe try it on your phone if your laptop's not finding it. So keep in mind that these things are, are skewed and you kind of have to, to play with it. All right, next candy opportunity, heads up. Who knows? that you do not have to be logged into Twitter to search it. Who knows that? All right, I'm just going to kind of throw in the general direction of people. Oh, I don't know, here. In the back. There you go. All right, awesome. Um, yes, you do not have to be logged into Twitter to search it. So the top graphic is just when you go to Twitter, what it shows. The magnifying glass is your friend. If you click on it, that bubble will appear. You can just start typing whatever. All right, I'm going to run out of candy soon, so. Next one, advanced search. Who knows about the advanced search? Awesome, we have a couple people. Woo, woo, there you go. Somebody over there, heads up. Oh, sorry, <laughs> sorry dude, don't sue me, please. <laughs> you know, I'm two for two. The last time I threw candy at a, at a security conference, I beamed someone in the head, so welcome to the club. It's an honor. Um, so, okay, so the funny thing is, Twitter kind of hides this this page. You used to be able to get to it, navigate to it internally after you did a search. I've tried and they seem to have taken it away, but you can get to it directly with the URL. So the fill in the blank form is fine, but we're better than that, right? I'm kind of old school with my research. Like, you know, I used to do search, search LexisNexis with those whole like within five near H lead. Some people are not, know what I mean? So I can't fill in these bubbles. That annoys me. So think of, of the the, think of this like the command line, but different. So you can do all kinds of stuff. So let's get into some commands. Basic one, to from. If you want to see tweets that are sent to an account, you just tell it from, colon, or I mean, sorry. Yeah, or to, colon, or from. Sorry, you can read. <laughs> um, and then you can do between. You can see if people have gone between. Now that's a great article at the bottom. If you want to see two companies have fought publicly on Twitter, you can do the to and from, or people you know. But whatever, it's still interesting to find. So that's one way to find that. And you can do that with or without the at symbol. 
All right, so what if you want to get a little deeper? Now, remember, I came from a law firm environment, so finding out if things were defective were really important to some of the attorneys I worked for. So if I wanted to see if people tweeted at Walmart that something they bought was defective and do this later, you will see some weird things, um, you could do that. Now, Twitter might try to be helpful and be like, did you want Walmart detectives? No, Twitter. So you have to actually like, force it through and say that you want defective. Um, and I also found like if you were trying to get recalls, that you could see if a company put something out. Um, so fun fact, if you know the stock symbol, Twitter recognizes stock symbols, the dollar sign and the stock symbol. Um, so that's a way to find out some information. Um, so the red, other red circle I have here is that Twitter will default to top. Top results will be skewed for paid people you know, if someone you know, friends liked something, if you're logged in, it'll do geographic stuff. Always click live. Live will be chronological. Now, there are some benefits to knowing top. You know, want to see if, uh, if, a, if a Twitter you know, tweet had uh, a lot of traction. But you know what? If you're doing research and trying to get stuff, it's really best just to click on live. And unfortunately, you just have to manually do that. What are they saying? Real estate, location, location, location. You can search tweets by location if the person keeps their geotagging on. But we're all smart, smarter than to do that, right? So let's take advantage of the people who aren't smart enough to do this. So you see in the top left there, if you want to search a key term, you can use the airport code or you can use the, the city name. And sure enough, I did get different results when I searched those. Over on the right, who knows what a lorry is? Tell me what a lorry is. Yay, truck. I don't know. I'm afraid to throw any, any candy now. There you go. There you go. Get one. <laughs> All right. The only reason why I included this example is I want to show that it also works outside the US. So BL3 is the first three characters of the postal code for Bolton, England. And uh, you can see, actually, it was a fun way to see traffic in that part of the world. Um, and then, so flooding. I wanted to see flooding. I could tell it within a city, within certain miles. The first one got me Dover, England, and Dover, Delaware. I just wanted Dover, Delaware. So I put in the zip code. And then you can also just do near, near somewhere. So that's location. Before and after, because why would, you know, you know, bef why would uh, until and, and since, you know, roll off the tongue there? So before and after is until and since. So this is kind of interesting. If you want to see, like, a term like cybersecurity, if you wanted to see how it was used in Twitter before a certain date, so I use big data in this example, but that could easily be cybersecurity. So it would be tweets up until January 1st of 2008. And once in a while, I'll do this, and you'll look at it, and we're like, oh, that was so sweet and innocent then, or oh my god, we're still dealing with that. <laughs> Those are the two like, reactions you get. Um, you can search between dates if you look on the top right there. I will warn you, though, it's not that, it doesn't narrow it down that great. I think about three days is the best I've been able to get, but play with it. Uh, and see what you can get. Um, you know, since is after, and then if you also just want a specific handle, you can tell it, oh, okay, I want to see what the specific handle does. And you can try different variations and stuff like that. So what if you don't want something? And this is not any political statement. This was just the only other Chelsea's I could think of where <laughs> London and Clinton. But say you didn't want that. Say you wanted, um, you know, so you wanted some other Chelsea. So you can, you know, separate out with the, the minus sign. Or if you didn't want the debutantes and you just wanted <laughs> the, the Hiltons. Um, now, just be careful. If you start taking away too many things, you know, again, it's going to skew your search results. But it's a good way to take out something, you know, common. Um, like I said, if you don't want, if you're searching something about Hilton, but you don't want Nikki to keep coming up. Um, and you can also use minus RT if you don't want retweets. Because again, you're just going to get duplicate information, so you can take away another layer of data if you take out the retweets. Okay, so what happens if you string these all together? You get a cool search like this. So this is one I actually came up with when I was still a law firm librarian. One of the lawyers was like, hey, I think there was a gas explosion in Manhattan. I think it was like the end of March, beginning of April. Can you find out something about it? You know, we really need to get some photos of the scene and yada, yada, yada. I crafted that search. I had a whole string of people who were walking home from work who stumbled upon the scene, and I was able to hand that, that search string over to the attorney, and you know, they dealt with insurance and things like that. Uh, so yeah, you can string a bunch of things together and get, you know, get different results. And again, if, if nothing comes up for your search string, you know, tweak it a little bit. That's why I don't like using that fill-in form. You have a lot more power and control over your search this way. So. 
Okay, I make fun of this poor woman posting this. She was like, hey, is it National French Fry Day? Those are the most pathetic excuse for French fries I've ever seen in my life. But the point is, <laughs> you can find on Twitter where things originated from. So this woman originally posted to Instagram and secondarily sent it to Twitter. Why would this be important? Well, if you were in marketing and you're seeing that a lot of people are originating their tweets on Instagram, maybe you would put some more money and attention and funds into Instagram because that's where people are going first, especially if you're doing like sponsored posts and things like that. Um, you can also do source for other uh, other platforms. So it's just interesting to see because, like, you know, if you've ever been in Instagram, you can see, like, secondarily also sent to. That's what this is doing. It knows that it was posted somewhere else and it was going to Twitter. So that's kind of a cool one. Filters. Now, this is a good one. This is definitely from my law firm days. So um, a lot of courts tweet out their, their documents for free. So has, if anyone's ever been on a court's website, you know what a hot mess it is, what a dumpster fire it is. So Sometimes it's easier just to kind of pick it from the Twitter handle. So this one, um, the Securities and Exchange Commission uh, has you know, a Twitter handle just for enforcements. And they tweet out all these PDFs with their documents and things like that. So I told it that I wanted from that account, I only wanted tweets that had a link in it because I knew that a link would be a PDF. And then I gave it, I was looking for somebody with the surname of Monroe. And bing, bam, boom, I didn't even have to go, you know, didn't have to go to the website, just had it there, clipped up the PDF, good to go, got the attorney out of my hair. <laughs> it was all good. Um, oh, and I did this on purpose for cats and puppies. Everyone likes cats and puppies. So um, you can tell Twitter that you want you know, pictures of cats, so do filter images, or native video. If someone is actually filming uh, video on their phone using the Twitter app, it'll, that's what native video is, as opposed to any other video source. So that's kind of cool. Okay. And I did this on purpose because it was this week here. <laughs> so this one, I'm not really sure, honestly, how much OSINT value this has. Um, but it's kind of interesting. So you can tell Twitter that you want to see a, you know, a tweet from Jack Daniel that had at least mi a minimum of 100 favorites or minimum retweets. And you can put those in. And again, those are just interesting to kind of see the popularity of stuff. And those are real examples from that search. Cool. Does anybody here do search in non-English non -English languages? Raise your hand. I don't have a candy 30. Awesome. OK, well, if you search in non-English languages, Twitter has uh, 34 languages. And if you want to tell it uh, how to search in those languages, those are the codes. There's a lot more. But there's some of the codes. You know, Sp uh, Spanish is ES. You know, do uh, you see Germans to E? So it's pretty cool. Now, the things you have to remember is you can search Twitter in non-English in the, the native English platform, and you can get one set of results. Or you can go to German Twitter and search languages, and you'll get slightly different results. I, I have an old slide where I have side by side where they're pretty similar results, but one or two were different. But in my world, I'm thinking, you know what? Those are probably the two that I really need. So why would I want to, you know, I want to cast a wide net and see what I can find. So, do you speak Twitter? So how you tell it to go to the other platform, it's just Twitter, question mark, language equals, and then French or those other, or the other two, two letter thing. Um, I pick Bradley Cooper because he does not have an official Twitter handle. And he also speaks French. So there's a good chance that you are gonna find information about him in French, because the French love to write about him since he speaks French. Um, but if you're just doing a regular search in your, in your little search bubble there, um, if you don't want to go to the actual website in another language, because maybe you're not that strong in the language and you don't know what all the other things are, like, you know, the, I think in French, instead of, where, whatever it says in English to tweet, it's in French it says, um, quoi de neuf, or something like that. Um, so if you're not com that comfortable with the language, you can also just tell it in, in the native, you know, English platform just to do whatever language. All right, who knows that Twitter lists are a thing? Who knows what a Twitter list is? Raise your hands. 
All right, that is a lot better than past ones. Yay, congratulations. Just come up and get your candy later. I'm tired of hitting people, so. All right, so true story about Twitter lists. Um, I was hired by a security company to do competitive intelligence research on one of their competitors. They were gonna pay me, but I couldn't spend any money to do research. Does that sound familiar <laughs> to anyone else? So I was doing all this you know, OSINT, trying to figure out who their customers were, because they wanted their competitors' customers. and. Uh, I was just through a Hail Mary, which is a sports reference, football, anyone know? Anyway, <laughs> thank you, the women are nodding, yes, thank you. <laughs> um, and I was like, let me check this company's, this target company's uh, Twitter handle. So I'm poking around their Twitter. I go to their list and sure enough, they have lists. Clients, potential clients, <laughs> past clients, <laughs> everything. And I was like, ding, 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 jackpot. And I was like, man, they can't possibly be this stupid. Yes, they were. They were right there. I clicked them. I opened it up. I did screenshots. I saved the URL. My, you know, the client thought I was a genius. And I got paid. And it was awesome. And I have not checked back to see if that company has ever shut down those lists. But um, I love to tell that story because Pri make your list private. <laughs> so what do you, so let me back up. So for those of you who don't know, a Twitter list is basically like a file folder on your desktop that you go to when you want to to look at something. Uh, one time I gave this talk to a less tech savvy crowd, I said it was a filing cabinet. <laughs> basically it's, it's, some, it's a list of something that you tuck away, you look at it on demand, it doesn't affect your main feed. So if you wanna have a whole, a uh, Twitter list of say like entertainment, you know, Kim Kardashian stuff or whatever, and you don't want that to mix with your cybersecurity stuff. I'm not saying I have a Kim Kardashian Twitter list, I swear to God. Anyway, um, <laughs> I'm just saying if you want to keep your stuff separate, it doesn't interfere with your main feed. It's something you go to on demand. Uh, so how you do it is you go to your main, uh, on the main page you go to your handle, you tell lists, and you create a new list. It just wants you know, a name of it and a little short description, and you can make it public or private. So here's a little thing. Back in March, I was all excited, I thought I figured out a hack, that if I made something um, private initially, that I could make it public. Oh, let me back up, I'm missing a crucial step here. If you make a public list, the person you add to the list is notified that they're added to that list. Okay, so if you're trying to be sneaky, I'll add a private list. But sometimes people still want to see your lists and stuff like that. You know, maybe like a colleague like that you work with. If you, as soon as you change that to public, those people are still notified. But back in March, I was testing it, and it wasn't notifying. I have all kinds of other Twitter handles that I have for research purposes. It wasn't notifying my other handles that I had made that list public. And I thought I found something. I was getting ready to go to B-Sides Charm, and I'm like, I'm going to introduce this, you know, this. I'm so excited. Oh, and then they fixed it a month later. <laughs> so, womp, womp. But the moral of the story is, if you are creating a Twitter list and you're absolutely certain that it needs to to be under wraps. Test it on maybe yourself first to make sure that even if you label it private that it still doesn't send a notification. Um, but that's the difference. So anyone public, if it's a public list, anyone can look at it. You can send the URL out on Twitter and be like, hey, I've created all these cybersecurity people. You know, it's this great list and follow it. Uh, for private, if you just want to have employers I'm interested in or whatever, keep that private. So Twitter lists are a great way to manage the uh, the fire hose of information that comes in. So you're like, that's great, Tracy. How do I find a Twitter list? So a couple of years ago, Twitter got rid of the functionality to find lists within their own website. Because, <laughs> and they they did away with it like a week before I was to give a big Twitter presentation at a conference. So that was awesome. I had to redo my slides. So this is how you find Twitter lists. You have to go to Google. You have to Google dork, and that's why I have the little thing down there. Because if you, if you do this a couple times, it wants to know that you're not a robot. So, um, which, try to explain that to like a not tech savvy crowd. I, that was hard for me to, under, to explain to them. So they thought I was telling them to do something illegal, if that, I was like, no. I'm like, just, but Google doesn't really like you searching like this. But if you've Google dorked, you know that. So anyway, that's how you find Twitter lists. So you need to do some sort of combination of, you know, of hashtags or quotation marks or keywords, and that's how you find Twitter lists. So unless they bring the functionality back, that's how you do it. Okay, so now I'm gonna move on to, there are some other websites and other things that interact with Twitter to help you organize all this information. 
I love Nuzzle, N-U-Z-Z-E-L.com. If you follow me on Twitter, you probably see me obnoxiously, shamelessly plug my <laughs> Nuzzle newsletter pretty much every day, except for here while I'm out here. Um, Nuzzle works with Twitter. Um, and what it does is it will aggregate stories that people uh, in your Twitter network follow. So if I, if I log in, I look at it, and I see that like 25 people, and they're all in InfoSec, that I follow on Twitter have tweeted or uh, favorited a certain article, you damn well bet I'm reading that article. <laughs> because that means, you know, then, the, then you know, the community's talking about it. It's something that's going on. So it helps you kind of rank things of what people are, are seeing. Um, you can do a handcrafted newsletter. And it's all free. There's no, they, they, now they just implemented a paid platform, which I haven't had a chance to check out. But all this functionality is free. Um, you can use it without logging into Twitter, but I think it's really kind of diminished. I think to get the most value out of it, you really need to be logged in. Um, and, they, and they have a Twitter handle, and they have you know, the website here. So it's a really great resource. Um, it's, a just, it's a good way to see what like, influencers are, are talking about and like, also to find other people to follow. But I just love the functionality of it tells me what is going on, what is popular, um, because then that's the stuff that I want to read. Storify. And anybody know about Storify? OK, awesome, a couple of people. So the first functionality for Storify is that you can stitch tweets together and make it like a story. So you guys all know DA667, right? You know, you know him? He likes to tell Twitter stories. So one day he was telling a Twitter story, and I asked him afterwards, do you mind if I Storify your talk? So what I did is I went in, and it enables you to graphically just stitch them all together so that it reads like a story. So it's not just a clever name. Um, and so this is on my Storify feed for people to go to. So I would tweet out that link. Hey, did you miss his great talk? Here it is. So you're not trying to go back into your Twitter feed and piece together where he tweeted and where somebody responded to him and all this stuff. I used to lead Twitter chats a lot. Um, all the time when I was in, in library world. So I, I would go in after the fact and pull this together so you would have a cohesive story about the question and the answers and not all the back and forth garbage of people fighting and, <laughs> and whatnot. But not only does Storify do that, but if you see the lower left-hand corner, they have an amazing little search engine here. We did a, a demo at B-Sides Charm. Um, you can search all those different uh, social media platforms, but Twitter specifically. Um, if you go in, they have all kinds of expanded features that you can use, like geography, like maps, and a lot of other things. Like Their functionality is pretty darn good, so I highly recommend Storify as another resource to search on Twitter. Now, any OSINT person worth their salt knows this site, right? <laughs> so in case you didn't, uh, as a reminder, I wanted to remind you that Michael Bazell has this whole Twitter part uh, here that's good to use. And I talked a lot faster than I thought I was going to. <laughs> so um, sure. So. Um, yeah, so that's my presentation. I threw a lot of, of search strings at you and things like that, but I'm happy to answer questions and things like that. So thanks for listening, but please stay, and I have more candy if anyone <laughs> wants candy. <laughs> Question, yes. Um, to the best of my knowledge, it's just social media sites. I haven't tried it with any other domains. Um, whenever I've seen the source filter explained, it gives it in the context of other social media. Um, but links, you could probably maybe try, hmm. You can also try doing a Google search that way, going in from Twitter the other way of, of links with, because you can do like with the site search and things. That's another talk I give, by the way. I give other like deep, Deep dive Google and deep dive other things. Um, to the best of my knowledge, it's just other social media platforms. You can try it and maybe shoot me a note if it works, but I think that they just pull from other social media. From this site, you can get deep check using Buscador to do like emulating of like Android phones and all kinds of different things, so like switching it out to use, you know, get those search results that you're talking about as you're logged in on the phone. No, no, and my talk was just basically um, emphasizing on the GUI. Um, so I meant to mention that in, in the beginning. Um, uh, so yeah, I mean, the, I don't have the, uh, the, the scraping and script writing skills <laughs> that you all have, but I know the GUI well. So 
I know I have not tried that because I just kind of. It's just a really didn't. interesting way to do it. I've heard the n name. Yeah, I'm actually I'm in the process of learning a bunch of yeah. stuff in my new job. So yeah. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Thank you. Any other questions? Yeah. Oh, uh, definitely location-based results. Like I'll notice, uh, like people like near me. If I like, if I have some sort of like geo, uh, if something is is like picking up geo, yeah. If it's if it's not even geo, yeah. If it's picking up where I am, I, I'll notice a difference for that. Um, the ads will definitely be different, things like that. And they don't let you close those anymore. I used to be able to dismiss, and you can't do that. But I mean, I do love Twitter. It's a great resource. But it, I said it's wonky. It's wonky as all hell, and I just, I don't know that people fully understand all the capabilities it has, but you just have to be patient and try different things and stuff like that. But it is weird, yeah. No, sorry, as I just said, um, I, I apologize. I meant to add a disclaimer at the very beginning that all my background in this is just GUI based. Um, so no, I haven't done any of that. So when I gave this talk the first time, like I said, somebody said I didn't know Twitter had a website, and somebody else said to me, oh, well now that I know all the stuff they can do, I can write better scripts. And so it took me showing them the GUI side of what it can do. So that's kind of what I hope to give to the InfoSec community is, let me share my GUI wisdom with you, and then you guys can figure out you know, what to do with it from there. So that helps things. Anybody else? Yes. So <coughs> Well, that would be under links. It does, it's not as sophisticated as a Google search where you can specify file type. No, because you can't, do, you can't add a file type to a tweet anyway. It would be a link to something. Like, like you can't add a PDF. It would be linked somewhere. So if you search for links, because like remember I showed you the, so the Securities and Exchange Commission? That was a PDF, but it was a link to a PDF that was on the Securities and Exchange Commission website. So it wouldn't understand, Twitter wouldn't understand if I was searching for a PDF, it would understand that I was searching for links. And then I was smart enough to know that that link was to a PDF, but it didn't. Do <laughs> yeah. you know if Periscope gets filed as native video? Is that still around? I thought that went away. It's still around. Okay. <laughs> um, I, I am not sure, sorry. I thought it, I didn't think it existed anymore. So <laughs> I hope no one's here from Periscope. <laughs> Yeah. Drilling down live feeding, so we caught a couple people smoking weed in LA. Nice. And, uh, basically, zoomed down right to their backyard. It was pretty funny. Yeah, if you can find it online, I'm sure um, Iron Geek record. I think Iron Geek recorded it. Um, I co-presented with Joe Gray at B-Sides Charm in April, and we did the battle for OSIN, Are you Team GUI or Team Command Line? So, like, the first half was I showed all my not just Twitter but other like Google and social media stuff on the GUI end, and he came in and did the command line. And at the end, we came together and did like a combined search. And yeah, we were like finding like who was doing a live video sort of yeah sort of thing. If you put um, filter, try filter Periscope and see if that would work and do that. So I saw another hand over there somewhere. Oh, oh, yeah, OK. I'm not sure if it, I mean, it might, it might fall under links still. I'm not sure that it would be smart enough to know GitHub versus, because it's just reading a link. I don't think that it can read where it's from necessarily. Because like, when you did the source, you use the name so it knows to match the name with the name. But I don't, I mean, you could try source GitHub, but I don't, I don't know if it, if it does that. Well, yeah, but I don't know if it knows GitHub, though. I don't know if it's, if, I mean, that's one of those things for that, like, developer blog that I don't know if they've told Twitter to recognize that. Remember, garbage in, garbage out, you know. If you, if you, don't, if you don't tell it to recognize GitHub, it's not going to recognize GitHub. They probably told it to recognize, like, the top five social media platforms, you know. So, yes? I know that part of this does work for the API. Could you repeat that again for everyone who can hear it? Can 
Can you get ta- tell the, in the microphone so tell everyone how to do that? Yeah. Sorry. So um, if you play around with the Twitter API, it has a lot of the things you mentioned. Um, and one of the things you definitely can do there is search for links based on the domain name or fragments of the URL. So you could do an API query for okay. links to get up. Okay, awesome, thank you. Yeah, like I said, I, I haven't been a librarian for a year and a half because like I, I just started my SOC job three, three weeks ago. So um, yes, I am not on, I admit I am not on super on top of some of the, uh, the things, but that's a, it's a good foundation to get you started. That's basically just I wanted this talk to be because so many people I talk to after I give these things don't realize what all Twitter can do. Um, so yeah, so I hope you liked it. And if you want candy, I have more candy. I don't want to take this home, so please take the candy. And uh, awesome, thank you so much for coming, thank you.